human rights work relies on data, which is constantly generated and gathered by human rights groups, human rights defenders, and institutions. Collecting this data is important, but so is translating it into smaller pieces of information that can be understood by citizens, journalists, policymakers, or judges. Basically anyone who has the power to make change. What is data? In the human rights context, the term data includes any materials, such as legal documents, visual and audio materials, and other documentation. Working with large amounts of data can be challenging. As a first step, it is important to understand what types of data you already have and want to work with. Types of data may include legal documents, such as cases, judgments, and laws, visual and audio materials, such as images, videos, and maps, other documentation, such as reports, police records, or testimonies. The data and the format it has will vary based on the goal of your project. This will help to build an informed data model, which will allow you to extract the information you need from your data. But before you start working on your data model, you need to define the goal of your project. The goal is a short definition of the purpose of the project, which should be agreed upon and supported by key stakeholders. For instance, is it to support evidence-based advocacy on a specific human rights issue? Is it to provide legal, psychological, and social support to victims of violations? Is it to document verifiable evidence of human rights violations for criminal and civil justice purposes? Or is it to build a public knowledge database about a specific issue? An important step in defining your goal is to understand for whom you intend to collect and organize information, and for what purpose. This could be done with the help of a simple user stories mapping exercise. As part of this exercise, you will need to answer three key questions. Who wants to accomplish something? What they want to accomplish? And why they want to accomplish that thing? Answering these three questions should help you better understand the profile of your audience and the purpose of your project. The following user stories were developed for the Cyrilla project, an open database of digital rights law from around the world. The goal of the database is to provide access to legislation, case law, and analysis concerning digital rights to researchers, lawyers, journalists, policymakers, and citizens interested in influencing policy. User Story 1 As a social science researcher, I want to know what laws deal with internet, social media, and digital rights, so that I can identify the gaps in current research. User Story 2 As a local human rights lawyer, I want to see references to international standards, so I can advocate more effectively for the rights of online users in my country. With that example in mind, we will walk you through the next steps to organize your data. What is a data model and why do we need it? In simple terms, a data model describes how information is organized and structured. It shows how different pieces of data relate to each other and how they come together to show a bigger picture. A data model will lay the groundwork for how your data and information are analyzed. Step 1. Understand the buckets of information you are working with. How can you categorize your data meaningfully? What sorts of things go together? At this stage, don't get too hung up on finding the perfect words. The Cyrilla Consortium partners identified three buckets of information. Bucket 1. Laws. Bucket 2. Cases. Bucket 3. Analysis. Step 2. Prioritize the questions you would like your project to answer. Put yourself in the shoes of your potential user. What needs do they have? What sorts of information do they want to know? Remember the user stories mapping exercise mentioned earlier? A good user story will help in prioritizing the questions your project aims to answer. Step 3. Map the buckets and relationships needed to get answers. What data needs to be connected and how? This will depend on the questions your project aims to answer. The questions will help you map relationships between the buckets. Keep in mind, 
the more detailed your data model, the more time it takes to sustain it in the long run. The following data model does not only show the relationships between these three buckets, it offers a glimpse into how these three different types of information come together in the context of human rights work. If you are a local lawyer who wants to advocate more effectively for digital rights of your community on an international level, you will need to learn what laws are being used and how, what research reports offer a commentary on existing legislation and case law. By looking at the relationship between case law and law, you will be able to learn which specific laws are being referenced in court cases. You will also learn how laws are being interpreted in local courts. You can see what research exists on specific legislation and international conventions by looking at the relationship between analysis and law. Similarly, by looking at how analysis relates to case law, you can find research that offers commentary on specific court cases. Now you are several steps closer to your goal. By examining relevant case law, you know which laws are used in your country to restrict digital rights. And you also identify the discrepancy between domestic laws and international standards by consulting relevant research and analysis. You can now use this information to point at gaps and shortcomings of national legislation and advocate for better domestic laws that will comply with international human rights standards. Now that you have a data model, you need to choose a method to implement it. There are numerous solutions such as databases and repositories that will help you actualize your project. Choose the one that offers the most effective way to store, manage and analyze your information.